Do you know how much backup power you're going to need if the grid goes down? Hey Provider Preppers, this is Jonathan and today we're focusing on energy consumption meters. I promised you a while back that we would do a video devoted to these because these are such an important tool as you're trying to figure out how much backup energy you might need in a grid down situation. So what these do, generally speaking, is you plug this into the wall and then you plug an appliance into here. Then you're going to be able to see the voltage, which is going to be a constant, how many watts that appliance is drawing and how many watts that computes to. That watt number is generally what you're going to need when you're looking at uh, buying or building some kind of a solar backup power system or a power station. As you can see, and if you look online, there's a whole variety of these out there. Um, and most of them are pretty good. They're going to be very accurate. Um, the major functions that you want on this is the ability to read your voltage, which is fixed, and your frequency, which is fixed. Um, so you, those you usually know, but the other things you want are your amps that an appliance is drawing, your watts, and then sometimes you're interested in the power factor. The power factor is a measurement of efficiency and we won't go into that in any detail here because it tends to confuse things more than people want them to be confused. On the display here you can see that right now our voltage is 121.4 volts. Our amps is about two. We're drawing about 243 watts. Our power factor is one. Our emissions of uh, CO2 in kilograms right now is zero because we just plugged this in. That's not a number that I usually care about or it means much to most people, I think. Uh, the electrical cost right now is zero um, or one penny now. That with your um, electrical cost put into the machine, it will tell you how much it costs to run this device. You can see that we've been plugged in for one minute now, and our frequency is um, 60, which is the standard for the United States. And back to our voltage. So some of the differences you might see between these, um, this one for example, this is capable up to 220 volts. So more than just the standard 110 or 120 volts. Um, it doesn't have, you'd have to get an adapter plug if you're going to use this in a 220 outlet. But you can see on this side, it is capable of measuring up to 20 amps. Uh, this one's only capable of the 15 amp. Uh, this weird configuration here allows you to put in the 20 amp plug. And we don't see a lot of those, but sometimes you have that for for example, our large freeze dryer has a 20 amp plug with the extra T on the uh, on the prong. So you need this. I, I really like this one for that reason. It is a little more versatile. So this is the plug for our large freeze dryer. This is a 20 amp uh, plug. So as you can see, that doesn't fit here. There's no place for that to fit because this uh, prong is oriented this other direction. With this, uh, meter, you do have the ability to plug that in and measure the 20 amp circuit. But for most of what we're doing, all of these do the same thing. Now, you can see this one has a couple of dark spots on the screen. Um, it got dropped, so end of life. It was a good one, but it's, uh, it's toast now. Uh, some of them will come with this little cord. And it seemed a little cheesy at first to me, but I found out that this is actually very handy if you've got a plug in a tight spot where you can't read it or this device doesn't fit up in there well, then this allows you to plug that in and then plug your uh, energy consumption meter into that. And I've used this many times. So this is a really handy feature if it comes with it. If not, you can use an extension cord um, or in a lot of cases, you can just plug it into a wall where it fits nicely. All right, so let's make this practical. What do these devices do? Well, these allow us to get two pieces of information that are important. First of all, instantaneous values. How much is this drawing right now? Um, the other critical thing that we need to understand on a lot of appliances is how much does it use over time? 
For example, my freezer turns on for a while and then it turns off for a while, turns on, turns off. So if I'm looking at an instantaneous value, it's either going to be showing me that I'm using about 90 watts or I'm using zero watts. So in order to understand and put that in context, I need to run that over an extended period of time. Over an extended period of time, whether that's a day or a week or a month, I can then look and say, oh, this used 30 kilowatt hours of energy in 30 days. A simplified example here. So this uses about one kilowatt hour per day. Then you have a good number that you can base um, sizing a machine on. So let's look at a couple of real critical kinds of things. Let's look at medical equipment. Do you have a CPAP machine or an oxygen concentrator or maybe a nebulizer or some other piece of medical equipment? Um, these are critical things that you need to be able to run. These devices can give you the ability to figure out how you need to size that power station. We've heard some stories of people who go out and buy a power station thinking it's kind of this magic box that will run everything and it doesn't work. It's not enough capacity and so they spend a lot of money on, on something that isn't going to do the job. We have to understand how much energy we need and how fast we need to be able to get that energy into that device and then make sure that we size the power station to meet that particular need. Your first assignment then is to figure out what your critical loads are. You need to decide what is it that you can't live without. Now for my wife, that's the washing machine, the freezer, and the bread maker. That just happens to be hers. Um, what are your critical loads? What, if the grid went down, what would you want to be able to run or need to be able to run to be healthy and to have what you need? Now we have to keep that reasonable because there's a lot of things in our home that we probably should not run during a crisis situation because we can't afford a power station or a solar power system that's big enough to handle all that. So we have to be a little bit uh, critical and examining when we look at these loads. Now you are empowered with the information you need to design your backup power system, whether that's going to be a solar power system, uh, one of these portable power stations, or a fuel-based generator, whatever that's going to look like, this gives you the information so that you can make a good decision. And now for the question of the day, what are your critical loads? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.